All right. All right, boys. Good morning, everybody. Y'all welcome to Sanctuary. And Good morning. Thank you, brother. That's some prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful day that we're all here at the Sanctuary, Lord, just to hear your word, Lord, just to be with Brother Gary as he brings a message, Lord. We just thank you for all these young boys that's been with us through this weekend, Lord, and we just thank you for Brother Marcus having a full class of these young boys and and we're just so blessed with that, Father. And just uh, let our eyes and, and our hearts and our ears be open to the word that you bring to us today, Father. And, and we just thank you for loving each one of us, Lord, and just be with the ones that are not here today, Lord, that they're maybe listening to you somewhere and, and studying your word. And we just thank you for all this. In, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are y'all coming up here? Hey Ben, if you want to go up, go up. Be a leader. Come on, guys. Let's go. Come on. Okay. Good job, boys. Well, go well for it. You got it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what page? 372. If I sell, it's in my heart. I sell good in my heart. I sell good in my heart. Good morning, church family. We're going to be in the hymnal this morning on page 372, singing Onward Christian Soldier. Soldiers. All four. All four verses, please. Onward Christian Soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus. Christian soldiers are 
turn over to page 401 and sing The Unclouded Day. Good to see y'all. And it's his birthday. Yeah, and it's his birthday. How old y'all think he is? 79. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see you after the run from that. He said he's gone. Hey, 
Y'all yeah. were running after church. <laughs> 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 and if you puke on that concrete. <laughs> He's 44. All right. Again, he gets sung to something. We just love you in this church. And Megan did. She come right there and said, I got to tell Dad happy birthday. Then all the kids jumped on this. Somebody started off and let's sing happy birthday to Jim Bow. And football players, if you don't mind, turn around, look at him, sing happy birthday to him. Make his day. Ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jim Bow. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> you don't get picked on. I don't know if we love you in this place. You get picked on is pretty sure that they love you. But it's good to see y'all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day and we just thank you for this place to come to worship you, dear Father God. And I just uh, hope and pray that we got open ears and open hearts this morning to receive the message, dear Father God. We just love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, be kind of realistic. Just get it out there. Uh, you know, a lot of times a preacher man comes to church and just the drags of the week, you know, kind of gets you down a little bit. You got to fight to stay up and this and that. And then you have to uh, read, but man, every time I come to this church, it's just like the peace of God just wraps me up, you know. Then he starts feeding you more than what he's fed you this week. And this past couple weeks, we've been in the book of James, and I was doing a little study that tells about the ones that's really going to go. It's kind of like the man on the football team. Y'all got to go through what you got to go through to be on the team, right? So, uh, it, it, it requires something of you, right? Sure. And, uh, if you did something out of the way that's bad enough, I'm sure the coach is going to kick you off. Well, on Team Jesus, you cannot be kicked off, but there is something you got to do to get on that team. And once you get on that team, and this is all the way through life, you get 110% of everything you got and never have no regrets looking back. But, uh, but you know, a lot of times uh, things get under my skin and it, God's still working on me. He's still working on you if you're a child of God. I mean, there's things he changes in me every week. And just that alone sometimes, uh, just, it's rough, tough. Uh, just this past week, I seen a quote where some of today's preachers saying, you need to quit looking at the bad and you can focus on the negative. Well, guess what? What Apostle Paul say? There is nothing good in me. And that's probably that's part of the problem in the church because guess what we just want to focus on what we want to focus on and not what god wants us to focus on and a lot of times uh in my life what god centered me on to change hasn't been good in my eyes but i found out it has turned out to be good so with that kind of being said i come across this the other day and we've been in the book of james book and james and to me i like it because you know it's one of those straightforward kind of things but I was reading this the other day because tonight we'll be in the book of James also. And it's talking about the the, the, the true vine. And last week, last Wednesday, we draw a picture with the apple tree. Might get to that here in a minute. Don't know which road we're going to go now. But it says, it is best to interpret the true vine metaphor this way. Jesus is the true vine. Obviously. The branches or who abide in him are truly saved. They have a real and vital connection to the Savior. The weathered branches who do not abide in him are unsaved pretenders who friends an attachment to the vine but drew no life from him. In the end, the pretenders will be seen for what they are and they will be cast into the fire. 
Guess what? There's no mistaking when you got the Holy Spirit of God living inside you. Some of you might be saying, well, I'm getting a little tired of this. Maybe you need to hear it one more time. Maybe something needs to change. Because I'm going to put it this way. Without fruits in your life, your faith is dead. So I didn't know which way the message was going to go this morning. We've been talking about that. Guess what? I can have an intellectual knowledge. Hey, did any of y'all know who Tom Brady is? Yep. yep. Have you ever met him? No. Have you ever went to eat with him? No. Yes. <laughs> Boy, the office open all the time. <laughs> Guess what? A lot of people in church know who Jesus is, but never got a real relationship with him. We have an intellectual knowledge of who Jesus Christ is and what he did, but there's no Holy Spirit living inside you, so therefore there is no transformed life. This new age Christianity which I got the word I do not like the word you either follow Jesus Christ or you don't and I hope you hear that you either follow Jesus Christ or you don't see Judas followed Jesus Christ the whole time but he didn't make it now think about that and we talked about this before and I think one of the reasons why the message is coming back the way it is is for the young people here today. And maybe somebody that's just not doing it. I'm going to tell you something. If the Holy Spirit's not changing your walk alive, then you got a major problem. you got a major problem. He's top center focus of your life. It's not about your pleasures of this world. Keep chasing the pleasures of the world. See what happens. Now get this. Just the other day, I heard a guy say, make this comment, the Ten Commandments have no role in the church today. I don't know. I wouldn't step foot in that church. I'll tell you that. Well, guess what? Here, here's the Ten Commandments, and let's look and see why though they are so important. It says, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Guess what? For some of you, sports is your God. Your house is your God. Your free time is your God. Second, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Idols. Guess what? We worship everything. That's two. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. You know, I hear some people say, well, you know what? That's saying the GD word. No, it's a lot deeper than that. It's a whole lot deeper than that, and you need to do a study on that. That's the third one. The fourth one is remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You know what I hear people in church say, and I'm a little guilty of that too. That's the Ten Commandments. Guess what? We've broken that. I've broken that. There's days I don't keep that holy. We're not supposed to since Jesus came in the picture. It is what it is. You ain't God and I ain't listening to you. Those four center around God. Guess what? The next six center around loving thy neighbor. It says, honor thy father and thy mother. Guess what? Somebody here might not have a dad around in your life or a mother in your life. I won't put you this way. That's the reason you have life. So just praise that. So you're here for a reason, for a purpose. Each one of you guys, guess what? Uh, Pujols, for example, St. Louis Cardinals. Look him up and see some of the things he says about his Christian faith. He ain't worried about hitting home runs. He's worried about Jesus. And he's using the gift that God gave him to promote Jesus Christ. That's a true uh, athlete, my boy. Thou shalt not kill. You know what? I've killed people in my brain. I've killed people in my brain. I ain't getting into that, but I have done that. And I hate to say this, I have come close to doing the same thing physically. But I act of God stop it. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
I'll tell you something right now. Some of you commit adultery on God every day. Alright. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. I want to tell you something, American Christian. If you're keeping up with the Joneses and just cause somebody else got something and you want something bigger and better, guess what? You're covenant. That's sin. Those Ten Commandments right there, if any one of us had broken those, tells us that we're going to go to hell without Jesus Christ. Back in the Old Testament days, guess what? They give sacrifices for breaking those Ten Commandments. Then long came Jesus in the picture. Guess what? He didn't come to throw the law away. He came to fulfill the law. Yeah. And guess what? When we see that, that tells us we are sinners going to a sinner's hell. Some of you in the church today, guess what? Make some little uh, penny ante prayer with no, with no Holy Spirit transformation to want to play the ball. Hey, do you guys want to play ball when you get a chance to go out there on that football field? What do you play for, to lose? I hope not. You play to win, right? So I'm in this game with Jesus to win it all. And I've already won. Jesus has won. Jesus has won. Jesus has won. But I got to win my battles too. And I got to put my faith and trust in them. Look at David and Goliath. Guess what? All reality, the looks of that should have been defeat. But David took that rock and killed that Goliath. Why? That giant? Because he knew Jesus was there and he had confidence. Yeah. So I don't care about football. I love the game, love the sport. My son's sitting right back there, and he playing two state uh, playoffs. Guess what? We never talk about football. But give it all you got, but never forget Jesus either. I'm gonna tell you something right now. There's people in the church. You know the reason why this is good? Guess what, brother? Me and brother Allen had another talk the other day. He called us. I can't get you off my heart, man. He says, it's like God telling me and you the same things. He says, so many people's playing games in churches that they're going to find themselves in a fiery hell and been to church all the time. I said, brother, how do we get that off? Guess what? That's a burden that don't go away, Mo. And brother Allen feels that same thing. You live like you live like the devil. You run with the devil. You can't have one foot on one side and one foot on the other side. You're either a Christian or a follower of Jesus Christ, or you're not. You still chase the world. You don't read God's word. You chase the world. You want your pleasures. You know what? If I chase it the way some do, I wouldn't even come in this church house today. Funny thing, me back before I got married and I had kids. Guess what? As bad as some of the stuff I did, I would I had enough respect for God not to step foot in his house. But I'm glad I did because there's always somebody there pointing me to the way. Show show you how the Lord works. Some of you goes through the stuff. I want to tell you something right now. Let's look at relationships. We don't we don't want to talk about relationship. But I want to tell you something. Have you ever been around somebody just one bad relationship, one bad relationship, one bad relationship? It comes a point in time when the person needs to look in the mirror. It ain't always Janie and John. Wednesday night we did this. If you will, turn to John chapter 15. Verse 1. We went over this not too long ago. <coughs> so I don't know about you, I feel like my heart's about to explode. Woo! You know, funny thing, I was listening to Billy Graham the other day. You know, I'm not ready. I, I'm ready to die. I'm ready, I'm ready to go to my new home, folks. I'm telling you that right now. Because guess what? I think the Lord makes it so chaotic on me sometimes that I look forward to getting home. Guess what? Uh, the sooner the better to get away from this rat hole. But guess what? I've still got people I care about, some in this church, that I, I, I'm really not sure what side of your fence on. I'm not judging, but by your actions you see. See, the other day in James 2.20, faith without works is dead. 
Guess what? We got people come to church. You could you couldn't drag them to do something. A good person's not going to go to heaven. Just being a good person will not put you into heaven. You can be the best person that's ever seen, and I know some that's good that does not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Therefore, you cannot be good enough. You tell boys I get a little excited. <laughs> Just imagine being in on the football field. Everything's come up my mouth. I wish I could take it back. It says Jesus teaches about the vine and the branches. If you listen to every word that comes out of my mouth right now, because today you have to decide what team you really own. Team Jesus or Team Satan? And we're gonna give you some proof what teams watch. It's kind of, it's kind of like offense and defense. See in football, you gotta you, there's three teams that plays to win. That's offense, defense, special teams. All three of those got to work together. But in Team Jesus, guess what? At the Bible, when you classify people, and we talk about this, I think, Wednesday night, there's no such thing as ugly person, pretty person, poor person, rich person. You're either saved or you're unsaved. There ain't no middle ground. There's no fence. There's no middle road to heaven. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The life, do you get that? The life you live, the truth you live, the way you live tells if you're a child of God or not. Somebody come up back there a while ago and says, hey, I think they ask Adam, say, hey, what's, what's wrong with you? He's quiet. <laughs> You know what? He's feeding me, brother. Ain't nobody getting in my way on that. Ain't nobody going to get in my way on that. Because, you know, I, I, it's, it's kind of like one of these things that might pop up. And I don't mean to, but I'm still trying to control my hurt. Hey, shut up. I, got, I, I need a minute. we got to learn to listen to what God says, not what you want him to say. Seriously. A lot of people walk around defeated all the time and acting happy. Hey, you ain't got to figure it out. You ain't, you, you, you ain't, you ain't giving the respects to where it needs to be. You know, I think church ought to be like this. Before any church service, it might start. Next week, I'll be at White's Chapel, just so you know. Uh, they're, they're still trying to find a pastor. I feel like God's called me to help help that group of churches out. And I'm going to be there when they need me because I feel God called me that way. And guess what? I think... Uh, 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 September 18th, ain't like that right? Huh? Lakin is is going to be uh, bringing the word up here. Funny thing, how God worked that out. Guess what? I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be on my Harley hitting the whoo, And God worked all that out. We need to listen to what he says in James, uh, John chapter 15. Jesus teaches about the vine branches. And get this, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. We just catch that. We're already clean because of the word he has spoken to you. If the word does not get to you for you to spiritually reborn, you are not connected to the vine, which is an example of this tree. You hope, you wish, guess what? I'm fixing to prove my point here in a minute. Somebody turn to the Galatians 5.22. When I get through, we'll read that. Oh. And get this, while every branch that does, does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Some more fruit. Like this apple tree. Guess what? 
If you got a healthy root system and got a healthy tree, you're going to have an apple tree. And them apples is going to show up on that tree. And I asked this question before I did it here the other night, before I did this. I said, why does that tree have because of the tree? No, it's because of the roots. You got unhealthy roots, there's not going to be no apples come up on that tree. But if you got a healthy root system and the tap root of Jesus Christ, you're going to produce fruits whether you want to or not. It's just going to be there. See, some of you think you're so smart. Guess what? It's time to go back to kindergarten and realize where you met Jesus at and what he said. It ain't about what you say, it's about what he says. It's not what he thinks, it's what not what you think, it's what he thinks. Guess what, fellas? Don't look at life like you got a big turmoil to face. Guess what? You cats was born for a time like this, and I'm not talking about that football field. I'm talking about spreading Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Funny thing about it, we got parents that miss on Sunday that want their child to be this professional athlete or this or chase this, chase that. You call yourself a Christian and you're not making your child want Jesus Christ first, you're making the same mistake I did and you will regret it, I promise you. I promise you. Get this, remain in me and I will remain in you in verse four. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain on the vine or in the vine. Guess what, I wanna tell you something. Just because you feel the urge to go out and do something good, don't mean squat. I'm going to tell you something. If I was going to do something good today, I'd walk out that door right now, pray, dismiss. Hey, i go down there and do boat rides. i go through LBL, find a little party, walk up, strike up conversation. Hey, you know Jesus? That's the good he's talking about. And we got to do good things so people can see. But it I'm going to put it this way. If you don't have pleasure in what you're doing, then you're doing it for the wrong reason. You're doing it thinking it's going to please God when your heart condition is teetotal wrong. It's a filthy sacrifice. <laughs> it's like walking up and handing, handing me a half ate hamburger and go, here, Brother Gary, I was thinking of you. I bought this hamburger, but it really don't taste good, but it's yours. <laughs> think about it. That's what a lot of us do to God and think we slept. I see people chase all the wrong things all the time. They do nothing about it. Guess what? They will find out then. They will find out from point A to point B. See, when I was going to church, I really didn't have somebody just get in your face like this. I wish I had it. So I'm one of them old school, hard and old rock kind of guys that just take it. Here's God's word, read it and see it. I'm not one of these pillow fluffing, sugar coated dudes that's going to make you feel good about the sin you live in and walk out that door. Here's the thing you're either a child of God or not. If you are a child of God, you're going to do certain things that you need to do, and there's things that you're not going to need to do. Now get this, fix your clothes on this, move something else. It says, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Guess what? Some do nothing. Can't even take care of your own home lives. Guess what? Give it to Jesus, he'll start straightening out your home life. What about your job? Might have a job that you hate. Guess what? Give it to Jesus. Remain on the vine. He'll take care and give you a new job. He'll give you something better. It might not be making the, the, the money. So I see a lot of people come to church house going through the same stinking storm I did back today. Oh, you'll come to church, pay Jesus, and, and tell people about the gospel, but you cannot wait to get that new truck or new car or show something else off or go through something else. I'm, a, I'm cool with that. But how many times have you sat down and have a talk with somebody that don't go to church, which you're supposed to love with all your heart, mind, soul, and body, 
and tell them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, that's a million dollar question. You got Jesus? You know Jesus? Or are you ashamed? I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're sitting in this church and you're too ashamed to tell somebody that, you're probably going to hell on the handbasket. I'm just telling you. If you're that ashamed, why? That person died for you and gave up his uh, everything for you. Why are you ashamed to tell people about Jesus Christ? I'm going to tell you something just like the part I just read. You're going to be cast away. Poof. I truly believe that. I'm tired of preaching to a bunch of people that don't want to that don't want to soak that up. All right. Somebody read Galatians 5, uh, uh, 22, Fruits of the Spirit. Guess what? The only way you're going to get these is from the Holy Spirit. You cannot get these. You cannot pray for these. The only thing that's going to come at you when your heart condition gets right, the Holy Spirit's going to start giving you these fruits. Somebody read that really loud. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, and goodness, and faithfulness. And I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit will give you every one of those if you choose that, if you pray for that, if you got the right heart for that. That don't come any other way. You know, some of the nicest, most compassionate people I know do not believe in Jesus Christ. It blows my mind. I sit back and pray, how, how can that be so? That person's more giving and more loving than, than people I've met in the church, but they don't believe. For whatever reason, the devil's done gotten that head and made them look at it a certain way, and that way's the wrong way. You will turn to James 2.20. Somebody read that, play. But you do what you know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. All right. Let's say old John Doe says he's a Christian. John Doe has no cat fruit in Jesus Christ. He works, he gives, he prays. Matter of fact, Matthew 7 says, Lo, lo, I cast away demons in your name. I prophesy in your name. Jesus says, I never knew you. All them fruits is plastic. They got a tree with plastic fruits. And one day, those fruits, this works, is going to be tried. And if they get burned up, here's what's going to happen. You're going to stand in front of Jesus with no fruit. And use redneck terminology. He's going to take a chainsaw. You're going to cut it right there. You're going to throw the tree in the fire. See, that's what gets me about today's Christian. You know, when you talk about the judgment of God, they're facing hell. Guess what? Y'all don't even listen. Y'all don't even want it. Y'all want to talk about something else. Your mind wants to focus on something else. Anything but God's word. I'm going to tell you something this morning. If you're sitting in here and your mind's on somewhere else, you might want to find out where your soul's at because I really, truly believe you. The Holy Spirit's not allowing you to soak it up. Because I remember a time, old, when I used to come sit in the seat right over there, and I couldn't wait to get out that church and go do what I needed to do. I just wanted to do shut up so I could run and do what I wanted to do. And I was playing church, Mo, and I'd probably split hell wide open. Just saying. Well, here's the thing. I just don't believe you, preacher. Well, there's going to come a judgment day when those who abide in him going to find out. You're going to find out. Go back to Matt, uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 7. This morning when I was sitting back there, the Lord was speaking to me, and somebody come up and asked me why it's quiet or what not. And I didn't mean to, uh, to, to kind of, I don't, I don't know if I answered, but this verse I was reading, and this is what it read to me. In Romans chapter 7, verse 7, it says, When we're struggling with sin, 
And I got news for you, Christian. You can be a child of God heading straight to heaven to the same place I am, but the sin in your life's got you bogged down, messed up, and you need to repent, get clean, and look for Jesus to come back. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're in this church right now and it freaks you out about the rapture taking place or freaks you out about dying, then you ain't ready to go. Ain't ready to go. Better get ready to go. The Bible says in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. Everybody blink. That's how fast. You ever played a ball game that you blinked as old? Which one of you dudes was sore? Yeah, it's you little man, stand up. This little fellow right here, guess what, uh, junior pro? Which he's a big junior pro ball player. He's the man sitting out there talking, he said, yeah, he's sore. I knew right then that dude played. A football player that ain't sore ain't no football player, he's riding the pine or riding the bench. <laughs> Amen. Seriously. Yeah. I remember football practice. You, you know, Saturday we had game film. I'd watch my defense. They come in. I was like, yeah, that old boy's play. If I come in one done, I was like, sucker, man, you can run it. <laughs> they give it away. What do you think Jesus tells us when we get weary? Hey, turn to him. He gives us wings as eagle and we can't see that. I want to tell you something, folks, and you better listen to me. You either count your money going in your bank account or you count your treasures going to heaven. That's totally up to you. But one of these days, you're going to have plenty of time to think about what you did. For those that's going to heaven, Guess what? It's going to be the best place. The best is yet to come. But in verse uh, chapter 7, verse 7, struggling with sin. Now listen to this. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed, I would have not known what sin was except through the law. See, you read your Bible enough, you know what sin is and what sin not. When you pick up your Bible and you start reading, the Holy Spirit starts transforming on the inside because you're showing him effort. I got news for you right now. Not everybody's going to heaven. You can believe what you want to. Those that abide in Christ will. I promise you. Because his word says so. See, you're either on the team or not on the team. If you're on the team, you're going to play the game. You're going to run to win the race. And then amazingly, some of the, uh, I love this part. If you will, turn to Ephesians. We fix clothes. Hi, Bill. Ephesians 2, 8. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. And people, you know, might throw something at me or whatnot. But most of the time when I was brought up in church, you know what I heard? Nine. Ephesians 8 and 9. Now let's see what Ephesians 8 and 9 says. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. I'm going to tell you something right now. It takes nothing from you to God to give you grace to be saved. But it does take your will to submit to what he says through a word preached. The Holy Spirit comes in your heart and you are spiritually reborn. It says right here, not of works so that no one can boast. Guess what? You can't boast about doing good enough. You cannot boast, and I do not like a boaster. They stop right there. We're saved by grace. We're saved by grace. I know I'm saved by grace, and I know that's the reason I give 110% of myself, because I'm not going to hell because of what Jesus did on the cross. And here's another thing. If we ever stop and look at it this way, God gave his son 
which died on the cross and God raised him from the dead in three days. And scripture says, if I believe I have that same spirit, same power living in my heart, devil can't beat me. He can try, I can get disgusted, I can get in a rut, I can, I can even cuss. Guess what? He ain't gonna defeat me, only I can defeat myself. You know why? Because we all have a free will. You ever stop and wonder why God didn't just make everybody saved and everybody go to heaven? No, it's called free will. You choose, you get a choice to follow him or not. You ain't a free ride. It requires something from you, it's a cost. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 10. For we are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which was prepared in advance for us to do. Anybody not get that by the way? We were created by God for a purpose to do the things he wants us to do. But since we have free will, not everybody sees it that way. We have free will. Guess what? Remember the part where I told you this one preacher said we need to quit looking at the negatives in our life and start looking on the positives and all this, you know? And then Paul said, there's no good in me. I want to tell you something right now. The reason why Paul said that, we all have a fleshly spirit and own free will. And we desire to do the wrong thing. We desire to do the wrong thing. We just had some swap around teaching. I'm going to tell you something right now. You better not take that job lightly or something. Very, I'm going to tell you something. I pray about it. Let them be serious about teaching those kids and make sure that they understand what they teach is correct. Yeah. I'll tell you something, folks. I'm all about having fun. And we're going to have a pizza party the second week of Wednesday. I don't know if y'all been told that or not. I'm all about having fun. I love to have fun. I'll tell you something. I want to teach you how to get through life with Jesus on your side so you can never get bogged down. See, I deal with a lot of people that I put, they find on the side of the road and ditches. I get calls anywhere from 11 to 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock. Young men that was once like you got off. So, seen this the other day. America, how good the church is doing. I seen a stat that just come out. 80% of the high school seniors graduate that goes to church. 20% of them is only staying. 80% of them is poof. Like a cloud. See? I'm gonna tell you something to you young guys, and then I'm gonna, I know some of you personally, some of you I don't. But if you've never been saved, you need to pray about that. You need to ask God to come in your heart and spiritually reborn, spiritually rebirth. And how can you find that? John 3, chapter John, John chapter 3. Verse 3, unless you are reborn, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But read that whole chapter in John 3, 18 or so. It tells you how to accept it and how to deny it. With every head bowed, with every eye closed. Hey, my thing is, hey, do you really want Jesus? Do you really want Jesus? I wrote this down the other day. It just came to my head. And I said, I'm going to write this down. Brought it that didn't know, but it says, Do you really want Jesus? Do you really want Jesus Christ in your life? Do you? Do you really want Him to come into your heart? Do you really? Are you really ready to meet His demands and surrender to Him and make Him the Lord of your life? It's not going to be easy. It means some of those things you do, you got to give up. 
I mean, some of the ways you think, act, guess what? You gotta give them up. Some of your desires, they gotta go. It means there will be new attitudes in your life. New ways in your life. New desires in your life. It means he becomes Lord of all things. All your decisions. How many here today make a decision without facing Jesus first? And how many here do it, make a decision without listening, without waiting? See, when Christ became my life, and I truly understood what it's all about. Guess what? I realized I had to give up everything. I realized he had to take front and center over every decision, every thought. And I surrendered. You know the first thing I said when, when God really got a hold to me? Lord, send me wherever you need me. Have you done that? Have you ever done that? Guess what? He'll help you in your decisions, your life, your marriage. He'll, he'll help you in every area of your life. You know, I don't know about you, but I've never really had a heaven on earth. <laughs> you know, but guess what? I will say this, the more you give to him, it does start to seem like a little heaven on earth. Why do we surrender, folks? Give him glory for what he's done for us. We look to ways to glorify him, not ourselves. You know what one of the things wrong with today's society is it's all about self. And this hit me the other day because I put a post on Facebook. It says, when you live your life, all about yourself, you will find yourself all alone. Guess what? When you get to hell, there's not going to be no daylight. There's not going to be no God. There's not going to be no peace. You're going to experience all that torment. All the torment it speaks about in the Bible. Guess what? Alone. When Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. When you truly do that, you'll abide in that. And that's the number one thing on your life. So I wish I could have had a redo with my kids, but I can't. But the parents here that's got kids in this church, guess what? You got time to make your life. And for every youth in this church, I'm going to put it to you this way. God will use you in mighty ways. stay on the back. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this day. Dear Father God, if it's somebody here today that feels like the Holy Spirit's working on their heart to be saved, to be spiritually reborn, don't let them leave before coming up and talking to me or one of us or some adult. Maybe it's an adult that says, you know what, I've been playing games with God and I'm, I'm done with it. Dear Father God, you know me, I'm going to keep on praying. It's one playing the games gets called out. The same for me. If I'm playing a game, call me out. See, it's time for accountability. It's time for us to love and look to each other. The iron sharp and iron. And everything we do, this church and in my body, dear Father God, is to glorify you and lift you up. Just help each one of us who walk out the door, dear Father God, know that we are your ambassadors and we are more than conquerors. Hey, we got a job to do. We just love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going prayer request today. <coughs> All right. Go, Lord, in prayer and receive us. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we 
Once again, we just come before you, Lord. We come thanking you, Lord, for the message of Brother Gary brought, Lord. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, help us all look to you, Lord, for all things in our life, Lord. And dear Lord, we just uh, thank you and praise you for all that you do in our life, Lord. Just thank you for this little church and pray for continuous blessing, Lord. And just bless uh, each and every one.